Matthew 8, 8, 18. Matthew 8, 18. Now when Jesus saw great multitudes about him, and he's come off the mountain, he's in Peter's house, and word is out, here's Jesus, here's the healing. I mean, if you, what I see with the homeless, you give money to one homeless person and then you got a crowd. Multitudes of them, he gave commandment to depart on the other side. They're on the river, I mean, they're at the uh, uh, Sea of Galilee. He says, listen, we're going to the other side. Well, this comes up in Mark and Luke, and we'll get better, more information. And a certain scribe came. Now, this is scribes, are, they're in charge of the scripture. They rewrite the scriptures, not to rewrite, to change, or edit, is, you know, this leaf is fading, getting old, got to be copied. And there's anybody who is officially in charge of the scrolls would be described. Sent unto a master, or that would be rabbi, I will follow thee whithersoever thou goest. That sounds good. If you left it like that, hey, that guy. Jesus said unto him, The foxes have holes, the birds of the air have nests, but the Son of Man has nowhere to lay his head. Hey, want to follow me? You might be roughing it. Paul ended the book of Romans in his own higher house. And it amazes me in the lie to see in church age. I'm going to say it. I don't care what you say. How many pastors own homes and miraculous homes? It was supposed to be the, the pastor is supposed to be the less finance in the church, the one that struggles. Not in the lives of seeing church age. And many of them would not give up their houses or anything for the Lord. And another of his disciples. So a scribe came up and said, listen, oh Lord, I'll follow you. Now here's a disciple, somebody who's been following Jesus. Different from his disciples. First guy was a scribe, ready in the law and the word. His disciples said, Lord, suffer me first to go bury my father. Now there's two aspects of, of how this could be read. No, no, number one is that the guy's dad died. He got word, my dad died. Can we go bury him? And another aspect is Wait till my father dies. I get the inheritance. I get the money. And then I'll come. Either one is not wrong. And either one may not be right. But Jesus said to him, Follow me and let the dead bury the dead. That's that expression comes from. Now, if the father has died, well, Jesus says, follow me, there are people still living. He died. Sorry he died, but he's dead. That's a plain, simple fact. you got to move on before they die. Number two, well, if your dad ain't following us, he's dead. In the world, he doesn't want anything to do. Let him go die. Let him go. If you want to follow, he'll catch up.
And some of the things people say, well, that's, that's really cruel. What are you going to do? I know people who have given up serving the Lord because of family. That's not right, but it happens. And when he had entered into a ship, his disciples followed him. Now remember, three quarters of the disciples are fishermen. Peter and Andrew, James and John. One's a tax collector. Don't know what Judas was. And behold, there rose a great tempest in the sea, Sea of Galilee, which happens quite frequently. I'm told. Insomuch that the ship was covered with waves. But he was asleep. And some people say, oh, the storm happened because Jesus was asleep. I don't know about that because there are other times Jesus fell asleep and there were no storms. The Sea of Galilee is known for its storms. Maybe because he is there with the disciples, and I don't know. I'm not going to say yay, I'm not going to say nay. But he's asleep. Maybe the waves of the ship rocked him to sleep. I would assume the way the, the public see of Jesus and the healing and how they want to hear him and the enemies of Jesus. And he had no place to stay. He just told the scribe. I would assume that the sleep of Jesus was precious. There are times the Bible records that he prayed all night in the mountain. His disciples came and woke him. That must have been. You ever get woken up with a good profound sleep and you're not happy? Be angry and say, No. Nah. Lord, save us, we perish. Now, for four fishermen in a boat. On the sea where they have their living for their entire life with, with Zebedee, James and John's dad. To walk over to Jesus and say we are petrified. Must have been some storm. I grew up with lobstermen. And we've been in storms, but I, I have never been in such a storm. I remember one time we were in a storm and we pulled up the side of a ferry, the boat, and we sought refuge from the storm up against the ferry. Well, about a half hour, hour, whatever time it was, we realized that we had docked ourselves where the village pump was. And within moments, here out of a ferry, the bilge pump turns on, and now not only we are in a storm and raining, the ferry's bilge pump is pumping water into our ships. Danger. We have to untie and shove off. And he said unto them, Why are ye so fearful? Let's see this Lord will in the other Gospels. Oh, ye of little faith. Now remember, we're going to see words in the life of the disciples. And they believe Jesus. And they believe Jesus. And we will come to circumstances in the disciples' early life. Before the death, burial, and resurrection. We're going to see the disciples petrified. And lacking faith. Now don't get me wrong. The writer of Luke. 
in that Iraq comes or nor'easter nor'easter in the end of the book of Acts he writes he says listen we are throwing everything off the ship and he says something I'm not quoting with correctly but he says listen we we were all in fear of our lives and this is it this is dread we're dead and Paul was gone the whole time then Paul comes out on the ship and says, I told you so. We really need that, Paul. What we can see from this lesson is, you can talk to someone and say, oh, I got faith. Watch it. I have been in circumstances in the last few years of me, myself, and my wife, and events in my life, to say, you know what? I don't have all the faith I thought I had. I'm a downright coward, and I'm not afraid to admit it to God, and I'm not afraid. I, you know, here's faith. Say, Lord, you're the one who's going to take care of it. I got enough faith that, hey, Listen, if I die, you want me to die, and you want to take me home. I got faith in that. Absent from the body, present with the Lord. I got faith. You want me to survive this? You want me to live? And, and, and better for me to, to be absent from the body, be present with the Lord, or more needful for me to be here. If I don't die and I survive, Lord, you want me here for, for some particular reason. That's my faith. I know the rapture is going to happen. I just don't know when. Now the thing is, if you come back up here, look what he says in verse 18. Now when Jesus saw the multitude about him, he gave commandment to depart to the other side. What did Jesus say? He said, we're going to the other side. All right? Verse 26, oh, you little faith. What's the little faith? I told you we're going to the other side. I didn't tell you we're going to die on this thing. And I would assume that, I mean, I know if you get danger calling your brother right in, in anger, I know what Matthew said. But I know that Paul writes that you can be angry as long as you don't sin. I know Jesus is probably angry with his disciples right now because he was sleeping. And they had not listened to his words. His words are, we're going to the other side. Lord, wake up. Lord, we're going to perish. We did not listen to what you said, Lord. Oh, you little. Now, come on. Why are you so fearful, you little faith? Rubbing his eyes. It'd be like a father telling a child, when I get gas, you get take the lawnmower and fix, I mean, and mow the lawn. Kid goes out there, he starts cranking that lawnmower, starts cranking that lawnmower, and it don't start. He goes, wakes up his dad from his afternoon nap, and I go, Dad, the lawnmower won't fix it. I told you I had to get gas. What the disciples and what we need to learn is we need to listen to what Jesus said. He just told them, he that doeth my words is like a man that builds his house on the rock. All right, the words of Jesus, we do the words of Jesus, we will get to the other side. They didn't listen. And don't you dare go, oh, <laughs> look at Peter, oh, look at John, look at the faith, the lack of faith of Judas. You got the same thing. You ain't perfect, my friend. 
There's only one perfect man in the world, and that's Jesus Christ, who's God. Somewhere along the line, you have failed too. Somewhere along the line, I have failed. Then he arose. He was laying down or sitting down. As he rebukes them. How about this? It rebukes the winds and the sea. What do you do with the, with the church? A denomination? Well, you are not to be yelling at people. You are not to be rebuking anybody. You give them a nice lovey-dovey message. Jesus gets up. Oh, wind, knock it off. Waves, peace, be still. And everything is calm right then and there. There's the master's voice. That's the voice that said, let there be light. Boom, there was light. Let there be the trees. Boom, there were trees. Let there be the animals. Boom, there's the animals. And the platypus comes, Lord, I think you made a mistake with me. No, you're just to prove that there's no evolution. God, the Bible says, and he made whales. Why? To show the evolution. Hey, here's a mammal that gives birth to babies. Life sucks, and it's in the middle of the water. What are you going to do with that one? And uh, uh, the manatees we have here. Okay? He's mad at the disciple, and he gets up. He's tired. He's yeah, there's that verse without a cause. Remember we took we said that, and that's not in the modern Bibles without a cause. Be angry. Well, he's angry at the weather. He just got woken up. That's the human nature of Jesus God. You, you know what he felt? Come on, get up, get up, get up! We're gonna die! We're gonna die! I, I told you. Oh, I was sleeping. You guys have had a dream of the sheriffs and all that. Ah oh, man, I was just having a oh, you <laughs> You moron Oh storm winds be bill steam be be still how's that? He had a cause to be upset. He was sleeping. He's God. He's asleep. He just learned. Human beings. When they get woken up, this is God learning. He, he just learned. Human beings that get up or being woken up are not too happy. How's that? So when you've got troubles and problems in life, and maybe medical issues or your family, whatever, and it keeps you awake and you're just... And you can't sleep where you sleep, and your sleep is not long, and you take it to Jesus, He knows how you feel. But the men marveled. You know, Jesus marveled previously. Here's this Gentile, and he's got more faith than Israel. And remember, he said he marveled. Well, here, the men, we don't know how many of the twelve, or more than twelve. They're in the boat holding their, their coffee cans and their cut milk jugs. What are you talking about? The boats I grew up, you had the milk jugs, they were cut such a way, and you had you had coffee can to bail the water out by hand. You get a bucket of water and you pour it out. You get a bucket of water and you pail it out just in case your build didn't work. Here they are, they're holding their tin cups, they're holding their buckets, whatever they use back there, and they're looking out like, Peter? Yeah, John? Wasn't there a storm? Uh, yeah. See the water in the boat? Uh... John, yeah, James. It's calm. Yeah. It was just windy. I thought we've been reading they believe Jesus. 
They are standing there in the boat. The storm is gone. The sea is like glass. The, the air is smooth. And Jesus is over there rubbing his eyes. What manner of man Jehovah Witnesses get this because Jehovah Witnesses say that Jesus is a man, but he's not God. What manner of man is this that even the winds and sea obey him? He's got to be God. Because no weather listens to the weatherman. The weatherman looks at the, the, the wind chart. The wind, uh, I forget what song called, circuits, and the clouds, and the Gulf Stream. He looks at all this stuff, and then he predicts the weather. And when the weatherman says it's going to rain tomorrow afternoon, the weather's not going to rain because the weatherman said it's going to rain. The weather is going to rain because the, the weatherman is looking at his charts. The weather has changed. Because of that man that's in the boat, that's God, that's Jesus, that's man. And they're sitting there holding their buckets of bail, whatever they use. In astonishment, like, I can just picture Jesus there in the boat and shaking his head like, Oh, brother. Can you imagine talking to the Father? Father, you're lucky you're on the throne of God. These, these human beings are lucky that the Father is long-suffering. Because in Jesus' life, you're going to see that Jesus is about at it. And the Bible says he had to learn obedience by living with these 12 men. When you're living with 12 fishermen, I mean, four fishermen and a tax collector and great old Peter. And John says there were many other things that are written that, that, that was not recorded. You know Peter got in a fight with all of them. And all of them got in a fight with Peter. And they all gangbanged on top of, uh, of the tax collector. And they all went. I can't imagine. How many times Jesus had to break up the fights between them? And some of them are, are, are recorded in the Bible. He's on his way to Calvary. He stopped. What are you guys talking about? Not me. No, we're not talking about that. We're not, we're not me. He pulls up a child and says, He is going to be greater in the kingdom. Let him be like, Yeah, you can't fool Jesus. So what happened? When they come to the other side, Wait a minute. Verse 18. Gave commandment to depart the other side. When they come to the other side, exactly how Jesus said it was going to be. Had they believed Jesus, when they reached the other side... They can quietly welcome Jesus. We're here. When he would come to the other side into the country of the Gagazines, there met two possessed with devils. He and Mark or Luke will deal with one of them. Coming out of the tomb, he's in. They are in the cemetery, the graveyard. That's where they live. They are possessed with devils and they hang out with dead people. And what's wrong with Halloween? It's all focused around the dead. What's wrong with tattoos? Most of my jury year tattoos is a skull. The dead. Both of them. Exceedingly fierce, mad, raging, anger. 
And we'll learn later on in, Matt, uh, in Mark or Luke, they, they try to handcuff them, and they can't, they break them. We'll talk about when we get there. This pictures some of your people today that are under the influence of drugs. They'll take some of these people, and they do find them in the graveyard. And they'll put the cuffs on them, and they're in the back seat of that car, and those cuffs have been ripped off. And you got one person in drugs and possession of the devil. And it takes eight police officers and 12 cops and three needles. You are in the realms of being of the devil. Number one fact is that somebody could be possessed, could be, could be possessed with a devil or devil is their fascination for dead. They want to dress up like the dead. They want to go where the dead is. They want to act like the dead. They're just dead. You know, it's funny, because in New London, I really haven't tried, not really much here at on the Beach where I've lived for that, but in New London, where I grew up, there's a lot of cemeteries. In Norwich, a neighboring city and a lot. And there are homeless people. You will find homeless people anywhere and everywhere, but you will not find them in the cemetery. Unless something's wrong with it. And their movies represent death. And murder. When I was, I was saved. And backslidden. And I had been introduced, and it was like five or six of the movies. It was called Faces of Death. And what all these movies were about actual live footage of pe people were being killed, were killed, or dying. Something wrong with that. That's the mark of devil possession. Christian ought not to be involved in it. And behold, they cried out. Notice two possessed men with devils, plural. Now later on in Mark or Luke, we're going to learn that their name is Legion. Legion means many. But what Matthew wants to show you is, Matthew is, here is the king of the Jews. And he's got power over the devil. as a king. He's got power over the sea as the king. And behold, they cried out saying, What have we to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of God? Alright. How come they know who Jesus is? But Satan in chapter 4, thou be the son of God. Yeah, Satan knew exactly who he was. Satan was playing with him. I just wanted to wait till we got to chapter 8 when the devils of the devil say, hey, Jesus, son of God, art thou come hither to torment? Oh, we'll see that word in Luke of the rich man in hell. I wonder what modern Bibles do to that those two words and two verses. Don't mess with the words. Now, I can almost guarantee that word has probably been changed. I don't know them the same. Before our time, before the time. What the devils know they will be judged one day. 
You know, you're not, we shall judge angels. And they will be cast into torments in outer darkness. For all, they know that. James tells us that the devils were, the devils fear God and tremble. They're fearing God right now, he's trembling. Satan knows exactly who Jesus is. He was just toying with Jesus. Like many Christians do. So Jesus shows up and they're like, it shows they don't know the times either. Uh, wait a minute. Jesus, you're here? Have we come to the end of the world? But before our time, this is not the end of the world. We must be in trouble with God's Son that He has shown up and He's going to cast us into hell before we're cast in the lake of fire for all eternity. So they do know something. And they were a good way off from then that a herd of many swine feeding, pigs, unclean animals to the Jews. Pork. Pigs. Take us to where the prodigal son ended up. The devils know they're in trouble. So the devils besought him, Jesus, saying, If thou cast us out, they know what's coming. Suffer, which means allow or let us to go away in the herd of swine. So the devils, the next best thing to man, the devil say, can we go over there with those pigs? Why not those people? Why not those trees? Why not those birds flying overhead? We want... <laughs> If you're gonna cast us out of these two men, let's go can we go into the pigs? And we read the other night that the swine are a type of unclean female properties. That women today will put a nose nose jewel between their nose. And you can go to a pig farm and see the same thing. There is nothing worse to go in. You're going to get a cup of coffee, and this has happened. You go in there, you're about to order your cup of coffee. She turns around, may I help you? And she's got the piglet nose ring. I'm like, I'm like, let's get out of here. My wife wanted her coffee and starts ordering. I'm like, please don't sneeze with boogers. I don't want to see this picture. I'm telling you, if it was my job, you wouldn't be hired with that thing in your nose. And he said unto them, Go! Ooh, that's an interesting word. And when they come out, they said, Jesus, can we go to those pigs? Jesus said, go. And they left. The devils obeyed, go. Ready? Go to all the world and preach the gospel. And Christians stay, sit, or they go out, uh, abortion. They go, uh, go vote, you Republican. You got to rank the vote. Will you come to church? 
We're having a church movie. We're having church bowling. We're having church something. How come the devils of the devil is more obedient to Jesus' go than Christians that are washed in the blood of Jesus Christ? That's sickening. That Jesus will tell an unsaved devil, go, and he goes. The Bible in Mark says, go. Wait till we get to the close of Luke, Lord willing. We'll outdo the Great Commission of Matthew in Mark 16, and the last chapter of Luke. We'll, 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 we'll get into it. But right now, he tells unclean, unsaved devils of Satan, fallen angels, go, and when they were come out, they went into the herd of swine, they went exactly to where Jesus told them where they asked. They didn't go out and jump to the other man. They didn't come out and go into the city. They didn't go out and jump into the trees. They came out and went into the swine. And Jesus tells the Christian, go to all the world and preach the gospel. And they go out there and they preach abortion. And they preach politics. And they preach their church. Or they preach their light is shining. Or they preach they are the salt. Well, so is Lot's wife, and she's not doing very good right now. How's that one? Lord, show me that today, or yesterday. And you can look up, I don't know if it's true or not, but you can look up and say Lot's wife under Google Purchase, and that, that, there's a pillar of saint, a salt. They say that's Lot's wife, I don't know. They ran into the swine, and behold, the whole herd of swine ran violently down into a steep place, a cliff, into the sea. Deviled ham. Oh, how I used My mom loved devil ham. My mom loved liver. And she had this little thing that her little styly loved ham and loved, I mean, loved deviled ham and liver. And when you bring a deviled ham to school, and she makes it, my mom used to make, my mom must have been, I don't know, she must have cooked for the military. Because when she made something, you were fed it for a month. You cannot, you cannot trade a deviled ham, spam, liver to other kids in a cafeteria in a school. That's got to go in the garbage. When I go down the aisle, the grocery aisle, I don't care, I, I, I'm 54, 55 years old, I'll go down the aisle, I'll see that devil hand, and I, uh, that stuff's, not because it's devil hand, it's like, oh man. You do you want to taste the stuff. But here's the Bible, devil hand. I ought, to, I ought to get a card from my mom and quote this verse in that in that card, blank card, and say, Mom, thank you for the devil name. Love, style, and Jesus. But there's a devil name. Glad it's not chickens. We've been deviled eggs. They enter the swine. The swine go crazy. And the swine do swan dives into the sea to die in the water. Hogazai. And yet here are two men with the devils in them. And they're just going about in the tombs. They're fierce. They're angry. They're, 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 you know, people can't even cross. They're just wicked and vile. Here these same devils go into a bunch of pigs 
and the pigs go off, they jump off a cliff to drown themselves. The pigs die, but the devils go off into hell. And they that kept them, I don't know, and I know you call a hireling or a shepherd takes care of sheep. I don't know what you call a person takes care of pigs. I don't know if they're shepherds, whatever you call them. Or cowboys, whatever. But they that kept the hogs went their ways into the city. And told everything. They are now the news. Reporting the news. We were there on the spot. You won't believe Jesus took the talking to this man right here. You know that man possessed with the devils. And Jesus said, devils be gone, go. Those devils went off, went into our, our pigs. Our pigs went off right into the, and they're dead in the ocean. Or the sea. There's dead pigs all over the place. We saw it. Phil, would you like to tell us what your view is? Yeah, I was out there and Jesus killed my pigs. No, Jesus didn't kill your pigs. That's how it's reported. Here's your newscasters in Mark, Matthew 8. What was befallen to the possessed of the devil? They told the people in the city everything. And you know how they stretch stories to make it sound, you know. You know it wasn't the truth. But maybe it was. Behold, the whole city came out to meet Jesus. Well, oh, amen, glory to God. And when they saw him, they besought him that they would depart out of their coat. You, Jesus? Yeah. You killed those pigs? No, no, kind of, no. Did you cause those devils to, to enter those, come out of those two men that are sitting clothed? We'll get into later. Sitting clothed in the right mind, and they're perfect men right now. And they, did you tell them to go with those pigs? Those pigs went over and killed themselves? Well, yeah. Get out of here. Jesus caused the pork belly market to, to crash. I get to see the newspapers the next day. Pigs killed by Jesus. He didn't kill them. You know that's how they reported it. And it gets better in Mark or Luke about the one, one of the men that is brought up, how his whole life has changed. Well, Lord willing, we'll get to that. 